Well, hello. Thanks for joining me. You know what never ceases to amaze me, and I suppose at this point I should come to expect it, is the way that God weaves in all of my conversations, all of my learning, my lessons, my materials, to connect to each other. It's almost like he wants me to learn something. Just a few days ago, I was talking to Pastor BZ more about stewardship. The conversation topic was stewardship of time, because his midweek was obviously talking about time as a commodity, that if we believe it to be so precious, we tend to guard it. Now, I had big issues with the word guard, because while that can mean protecting your time or making good use of it, it can also mean putting barriers up. It can mean wasting your time because you're holding back, you're not making plans with people so that you're available for something else that maybe never comes. And so instead of doing something, you've done nothing. And that's pretty poor stewardship of our time. And so I said to the pastor, you know, this is why people are so afraid to act when God calls us to respond, because we're trying to be good stewards of that time, because we don't want to take giant risks if it's not where God is calling us in the direction he wants us to go. We want to be sure that what we're hearing is God and not our own ideas. But how do we know? How do we know when it's God? And then I sit down with these materials today called Knowing Where God Is at Work. And within the first paragraph, it brings up the same questions. Well, I don't know if God wants me to get involved here. So I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to wait. And by then we've missed the invitation to join God where he's working. And that's the idea of the study we've been going through this experience in God. How do we know when God is speaking to us? I've been asking that question since we started this series. That's what this whole lesson is going to be about. So I'm kind of excited, and I'm glad that I can see God bringing this forward in all of these conversations I've been having. I hope today you're going to find something good out of it with me. So let's get into it. So God has tried at times to get our attention by revealing to us where he is at work. We see it but maybe we don't immediately identify it as God's work. We say to ourselves, well, I don't know if God wants me to get involved here or not. I'd better pray about it. And so we leave that situation and we take that time and we pray. And the opportunity to join God in his work is missed. So what's the answer? Well, the author says a tender and sensitive heart will be ready to respond to God at even the slightest prompting. And guess how we get that tender, sensitive heart with God? by building that love relationship. If we're going to join him, we need to know where he is working. The scripture tells us of some of the things that only God can do. So it's imperative that we recognize what those things are. Then when something happens to us that we know only God can do, we are absolutely sure this is God working. It's his activity. Now this doesn't deny God's initiative. Unless God opens our spiritual eyes, we talked about this last week, unless he does that, we're not going to see where he's working. So he's still going to reach out and initiate with us. But our tender, sensitive heart will be ready for that initiative and willing to respond. So there's actually this really interesting illustration in the material from Unit 2, and I'm pretty sure I didn't share it with you. But there's an example of where God is working, of recognizing something that only God could do. Faith Baptist Church had been trying to start college campus Bible studies. They'd never worked with students. They didn't have any experience working with students. They didn't know how to approach students. But they went to the campus and they tried to start it. And it didn't work. Couldn't get any interest. Couldn't get attendance. And so after meeting on campus with some of the students, the, the Christian students who were also interested in, in upstarting this Bible study, he said, this is what I want you to do. No matter what happens this week, whatever you've got planned, if someone starts a spiritual conversation with you, stop what you're doing. Don't go to the next thing you have planned. Give all of your attention to that moment. Embrace it and see what happens. And one of the girls said, I had walked to class with this one girl for two years. They have conversations all the time. But this week, on this particular day, that girl said, I think that you're a Christian, right? I need to talk to you. And that girl, on her way to class, remembered what the pastor said, stopped going, skipped her class, and they went to the cafeteria to talk. That girl said 11 of us, 11 of us girls have been studying the Bible together, but none of us are Christians. Do you know anyone who could lead a Bible study? Oh, hello, God. And as a result of that contact, they ended up making three Bible studies in the women's dorms and two in the men's dorms. That it wasn't that they didn't need a Bible study. They were just trying to do it in the wrong place. And God showed up and showed them where he was working. If that girl had never gone to the cafeteria to have that conversation, she would never have known about the need for the Bible study in the dorms. That's what we're talking about. 
That's experiencing something that only God could do. And taking your tender, sensitive heart and responding when God prompts you to. Reminding us now of John chapter 6, verse 44, which says, No one can come to me, and that's Jesus, unless the Father who sent me draws him. That had to happen in God's time. So no one is going to seek God or spiritual work unless God is at work in them, in their lives. So suppose a, a neighbor or a friend or one of your kids starts to inquire about spiritual things. You don't have to question whether or not it's God drawing him or her. He's the only one that's going to do that. No one's ever going to seek after God if God is not at work in their life. For example, as Jesus passed through a crowd in the Bible, he was looking around to see where God was at work. The crowd was not the harvest field. The harvest field was within that crowd. And who did Jesus see? Zacchaeus up in a tree. And so Jesus said to himself, no one can seek after me unless they have the earnestness of God in their heart. And he saw the effort that Zacchaeus was taking to seek Jesus. So he knew that was God at work in Zacchaeus. That's where God was working. And he responded by approaching Zacchaeus and telling him, all right, it's you. He pulled away from that crowd. And of course, what happened as a result? Salvation came to the household that night. Jesus always looked for the activity of the Father and joined him. Salvation comes as a result of us joining our life to God's activity. John 14, 15 through 17 says, If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. You know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. We've heard many a lesson about the Holy Spirit coming and entering into us after we've accepted Christ. God doesn't just leave us to our own devices. It's one of the ways he communicates with us. It's one of the ways that we experience God. When we're saved, we enter a love relationship with Jesus Christ, with God himself. The Holy Spirit will teach us. So these are the things that only God can do. God is the only one who can draw people to himself. God causes people to seek after him. God reveals spiritual truth. God convicts the world of guilt and of sin. God convicts the world of righteousness. And God convicts the world of judgment. When we see one of these things happening, that's when we know that God is at work. When we see someone coming to Christ or asking about spiritual matters, coming to understand spiritual truth, experiencing conviction of sin, being convinced of the righteousness of Christ, or being convinced of judgment, that's God. The author says, when I was speaking in a series of meetings, Bill, a plant manager, said, You know, I've not been looking on the job to see the activity of God. He mentioned Christian people in key positions in his plant. He wondered if God had not placed them in those positions for a purpose. He decided to get his co-workers together to say, Let's see if God wants us to take this entire plant for Jesus Christ. And does that sound like something God might want us to do? Yeah. So what do you suppose if this came across your mind? If you were Bill in a plant and you thought that's what God wanted you to do, where would you start? Well, the author says we start by praying. Only the Father knows what he's purposed, and he knows the best way to get it done. He gave Bill that burden to bring the people together. So after we pray, we get up off our knees, and we see what God is going to do next. Watch what people are saying when they come to you. Suppose someone comes up to Bill in the plant, for example, and says, you know, my family is really struggling financially, or I'm having a especially hard time with my teenager. Bill just prayed, oh God, show me where you're at work. So he needs to make the connection between that prayer and what happens next. If we don't connect what happens next, we might miss God's answer to our prayers. Always connect what happens next. So what should Bill do? Well, Bill needs to ask the kinds of questions that would reveal what's happening in that person's life. We need to learn what questions to ask when people cross our paths so we can find out what God is doing in their lives. For example, how can I pray for you? Or what can I pray for you? Do you want to talk? What do you see as the greatest challenge in your life right now? Or what's the most significant thing happening in your life right now? Could you tell me what God is doing in your life? What's bringing God to the surface of your life right now? What particular burden has God given you? And maybe the person responds, I don't really have a relationship with God, but in the last little while with my problem with my teenager, I sure have been thinking about it. Or maybe they say, well, when I was a kid, I used to go to Sunday school. My mom and dad made me go. I got away from it, but the financial problems or wonders really caused me to think about it. Those statements sound like God is at work in those people's lives. He may be drawing that person to himself, causing that person to seek after God, 
or bringing a conviction of sin, things only God can do. So when we want to see, when we want to know what God is doing around us, pray. But don't just pray. Watch and look and see what God does next. Make the connection between your prayer and what God does next. Find out what God is doing by asking probing questions. Then listen. Be sensitive. Read the situation. Be ready to make whatever adjustments it is to God and what he is doing. There's another illustration here in the book. A visitor came by accident. He says, we had a man visit our church by accident. He saw on the bottom of the bulletin, pray for our mission in Kyle, pray for our mission in Prince Albert, pray for our mission in Love, pray for our mission in Regina, pray for our mission in Blaine Lake, and others. And he asked what it meant. He explained that the church had made a commitment. If God ever shows us where someone desires a Bible study or a church, we will respond. He said, you mean to say that if I were to ask you to come start a Baptist church in our town, you would respond? I told him we would. And he started to cry. He was a construction worker in Leroy, 75 miles east. He said that he'd been pleading with people to start a Baptist church in Leroy for 24 years. Nobody had wanted to help. And he asked if they would come. They did. They established a church in Leroy. They bought two lots on a main street. That man was so excited that he bought a school building and moved it to the site to use for the church. He is now functioning as a lay pastor in work beyond Leroy, and both of his sons have responded to the call of gospel ministry. As a church, they were already conditioned to seeing things that only God can do. When God let them see where he was working, they immediately recognized that as their invitation to join him. Frequently, the reason we don't join God where he's working is because we aren't committed to joining him. We are busy wanting God to bless us, not to work through us. As a church, we need to stop looking for how God is going to bless us and look for how God is going to reveal himself to us by working through you and out beyond you to accomplish his purposes. The working of God in us will bring us a blessing. The blessing is a byproduct of your obedience and experience of God. Who can tell what one solitary visit from a stranger can mean in our church? Ask some questions about what God is doing where that person is. Then we'll know. We'll know how to adjust our lives to be an instrument for God so that God can do what he wants to do. When we start to see God moving, just quickly adjust our life and respond. Okay, now really quickly, there's just two more points that we need to make sure we connect from what we've been talking about. Remembering that God invites us to respond to his work. The first thing we need to think about is that God speaks when he's about to accomplish his purpose. When he reveals himself to us, that's when we need to respond. That's true throughout scripture. Now keep in mind, the final completion might be well off. Abram's son was born 25 years after God promised. But when God comes to us, that's the time for the response. We got to begin then because we're busy adjusting our lives according to God, and we may need to make some preparations for what he's about to do through us. The second fact, what God initiates, he completes. Isaiah confirmed this when God said through him, what I have said, that will I bring about. What I have planned, that I will do. That's in Isaiah 46, 11. Earlier, he warned God's people, the Lord Almighty has sworn, surely as I have planned, so it will be, and as I have purposed, so it will stand. For the Lord Almighty has purposed, and who can thwart him? His hand is stretched out, and who can pull it back? God says that if he ever lets his people know what he's about to do, it's as good as done. He himself will bring it to pass. What God speaks, he guarantees. This holds enormous implications to individual believers, churches, and denominations. When we come to know God, to know what he's about to do where we are, we come with the assurance that what God indicates that he's about to do is certain to come to pass. Now, if any of us finds us disagreeing with that statement, we need to remember that we base our facts not on our own experience, but that our understanding of God comes through scripture. Throughout history, people have said that they had a word from the Lord and it didn't come to pass. But you can't look to those kinds of experiences to understand God. Which means that a strong word of caution also comes to spiritual leaders. That if you say that you have a word from the Lord, you have to stay until it comes to pass. God calls us out. He says if any of you says that they have heard from the Lord and it doesn't come to pass, that they're straight up false prophets. And they're a severe punishment for that. God's nature demands it. What God says will come to pass. Here are our five short summary statements for today. 
a tender and sensitive heart will be ready to respond to God at the slightest prompting. Pray and watch to see what God does next. Make the connection. Ask probing questions and listen. God speaks when he's about to accomplish his purposes. And what God initiates, he completes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that this is a good time. Lord, I ask that this is a time for you to reveal yourself to us where you are working. And God, when we pull ourselves from this prayer, may you open our eyes to reveal it to us, God. And may we respond. May we make the connection between whatever it is you want to show us and whatever it is you do. Lord, please, thank you for including us where you are working, for bringing our lives into your will, for preparing us for good works, for fulfilling your purposes through us. Lord, we ask that you come to our church and that you work through us, and that by it we may be blessed. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen.